How's it going, folks? How's it going? I'm Brother Matthew, and this is Christian Coffee Time, where we sit down together to study the Word of God, and a little something different here. Um, not that often do I really go out of my way to address certain accusations and things in deep, deep, deeper details. Uh, I might mention it and just brush it off and just laugh at it or whatever. Uh, but uh, this morning I had a pretty good chuckle as I was uh, kind of surprised to discover something. Um, I was searching through my links and stuff, uh, trying to find a message I had written a while ago. I was trying to get some notes on something. And while I was doing some searching and Google searching and stuff, I happened to come across uh, a rather interesting uh, post. Um, a couple things, actually. There is the, the first one was a, a post that an individual made uh, calling me out saying how mean i am and how horrible of a person i am all that kind of thing and i'm just i'm just one of one of those this unreasonable conservatives and all that kind of thing and uh it was over he got mad at me because i had banned him from the christian coffee time subreddit for good reason um he uh was all mad at me so he went over to his other uh, uh subreddit where it's it's like a forum you put all kinds of links and posts and write-ups you ask questions all kinds of and it becomes like a little community well this community <laughs> uh our open christian uh progressive christians um who yeah basically a subreddit of heretics is all it is so he went over there to that group and he made this big, long-winded plea for help and advice uh, because he was all mad because I had banned him. Now, what it was over is a little while ago, a couple years ago, you remember Pastor James Coates in Canada, uh, the big-time pastor there who was arrested, mis mistreated, and harassed and all that kind of stuff that the people are showing all kinds of religious discrimination against him and his church because he, him and his congregation kept gathering together and the government saying you're not allowed to gather together even though the bible flat out says hebrews 10 25 um, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching um, that we are to obey the Lord, and we were told to gather together, and that the government cannot tell us when we can and cannot gather together to worship God. We ought to obey God rather than men. What the Lord has told us, that will we do. The government said you're not allowed to sing hymns out loud. The government said you're not allowed to take communion. The government said you're not allowed to, uh, to tithe. You're not allowed to do anything because COVID and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we ought to obey God rather than men. And if, if whatever the Lord says in his word, that will I do. And I couldn't care less what, what government mandates, what government protocols come down the line. If, if what people say contradicts the word of God, I'm obeying the word of God. And I couldn't care less what anyone else says. Uh, so this individual got mad and basically saying James Coase deserved what he got. Yeah, kind of thing is saying you know, he got arrested because he wasn't following mandates and going on. And so I banned him. I'm not going to argue with those kinds of individuals. You can't really argue with progressive heretics <clears throat> because these people don't believe the Bible. These people don't believe God. These people cherry pick scripture. The progressive Christianity is a cult for people who are bored of the Bible and they're just cherry picking certain words and a couple little things to try to beef up their cult. That's all it is. It's a cult. It's not Christian. These individuals are not Christians. Um, so I banned him and he got mad and he wrote a huge public article against me and Christian coffee time. I thought that was kind of funny. And then it was a little while after that, uh, my wife comes to me, uh, with something that she found because I was telling her about, like found this online and I thought that was rather funny. So she went and did some searching and came, uh, came up with a, another thing that she found was, uh, someone mentioned me in a book. I'm famous. 
So an individual <laughs> was all uh, was all mad at me, thinking I'm I'm some crazy wacko nut job, and uh, saying that I I need to get my head checked uh, because of something that uh, that I I preach, and they're against me and and. Uh, uh, Christian Coffee Time, they actually included a link of one of my Bible studies uh, in the, in their write-ups as, as an example of, of the kind of people that need to get their head checked, and he's referencing me. Uh, anyways, what it was on was, uh, I was in my, it was in my message on King Saul and the Witch of Endor, and it's in my Spiritual Warfare series. It's one of the messages I, I, I wrote up on uh, the downfall of rebellion and how obeying, uh, disobeying the Lord and stubbornness and rebellion, how far it can go. And, and then addressing King Saul and his downward spiral and then how he eventually wound up with the Witch of Endor. And uh, what the guy was going on about, uh, mocking me, uh, is what I said about what happened and that the spirit of the prophet Samuel came up and spoke to King Saul. That's what the Bible says. And he says anybody who thinks that was the spirit of the prophet Samuel needs to get their head checked. Um, but... Um, okay. <clears throat> and the king said unto her, Be not afraid. This is 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said to Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and stooped with his face to the ground, and bowed himself. Now, yeah, we want to ask you a question. If this was not the prophet Samuel, then why is God, who is the author of the scriptures, who gave the inspiration of the scriptures, uh, why, why is the Lord putting in the Bible, when God is not the author of confusion, why is the Lord putting in the Bible, verse 15, And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. <clears throat> and the Lord, verse, 19, verse 17, verse 17. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand. Go back a few chapters. Remember when the prophet Samuel was telling King Saul about how his kingdom is going to be rent from him and give, given to his neighbor? The Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. How is this not Samuel? Well, uh, the witch can't bring it. You're right. The witch can't. I'll address that in just a, just a moment. And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me. For, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. And my whole message goes goes on to show how King Saul actually was a saved man. And he just fell, fell into uh, rebellion, but he repented. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. And Saul fell straightway along the earth and was so afraid because of the words of Samuel. Now, okay. Can witches bring people up uh, uh, from the afterlife? No, absolutely not. Uh, no, they cannot. And this is also why, as it talks about, that the witch cried out in terror because it wasn't her familiar spirit. It wasn't her familiar spirit. This was actually the spirit of the prophet Samuel that came up, and that's why she cried out in terror because she had nothing to do with it. But the Lord canceled her out and, and silenced her familiar spirits, and the Lord brought up the spirit of the prophet Samuel. Just like the Lord can bring people back from the dead physically, the Lord can also uh, 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 bring people back spiritually. See the spirit of the prophet Samuel and Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. And let alone, as the text flat out says, Samuel said, Samuel said, Samuel said, as the Lord spake by me. That's what it says. If it wasn't actually Samuel, do you not think that the Lord would have worded it in a way so, so that there would be no confusion, that people wouldn't be led to believe that it actually was Samuel? So just saying, 
the text of the scriptures says. And let alone if you want to know more about that, please go watch my message, uh, King Saul and the Witch of Endor. Um, but yeah, uh, people will, will uh, attack uh, of all kinds. Uh, they'll, they'll hate you, and don't be surprised when you decide to follow the Lord after he says how the world will hate you. Don't be surprised when they actually do. Um, and watch your friends disappear when you hold the biblical truth. Watch other people turn against you because you say the Bible says. So I find it really funny. Uh, it makes for great content as well. Um, uh, some people get really worked up about their opposition. One of the things I like to do as well when I'm out and I'm street preaching, I'm doing public evangelism, and people come up with their cameras and their, their phones and stuff, and, and they're recording me and taking pictures and to, to mock me. I like to turn to them and give them a two thumbs up and say, hey, thanks for the free publicity. They're helping because when they, especially when they're recording, they're recording me giving the gospel, and then they put it on their social media say, listen to this guy. You're helping me spread the gospel. And when you, and when you link to Christian coffee time, to all of your heretical friends, and, and to try to mock me, all you're doing is giving them a link to, to the Christian coffee time ministry so they can come and hear the gospel and see biblical truths. You're actually helping me in a way. So there you go. I find it really funny when people try to hate against me and hate on the ministry. You're actually in a, in a roundabout way helping. So there you go. And also, I don't care if people hate me, what people say say of me. Um, I know what the Bible says. I'm going to hold to the word of God. You can you can despise, mock, and name call all you want. My shoulders are pretty big. So I don't care. And we have to obey God rather than men. What the Bible flat out says, that's the biblical truth. And if you want to say that someone saying the Bible says and flat out clear scripture that those kinds of indi individuals need to get their head checked, that just shows your heresy. Your heresy is showing. Um, <laughs> regarding the guy who was angry at me because I banned him, um, this this part actually made me laugh really hard. I, I laughed really good when I read this. Um, I hope I didn't. Well, I did close the link. One second. The guy uh, it goes on big long spiel about uh, about how I, uh, he was banned and it's all unfair and and all of this. And he said he says, <clears throat> I find it absolutely absurd that people think online church services are somehow not real services and that Christians have to go to church. Like, no. If anything, that just shows your privilege. <laughs> all right <laughs> but you have to go to church like going to church is is such a chore going to church is so horrible going to church oh i couldn't think of going to church okay online Online services are one thing, but that's not the gathering of the saints together, as the Bible says. When ye are gathered together, as the Bible says, and when you actually study the language, study the words, this means an actual physical gathering. Digital, online, streaming, broadcasting, whatever, is not actual biblical church. It could be used for ministry, for outreach, for Bible studies, and all the other kind of thing. And it could be used as a buffer to when you can find a place to go. But the, as the Word of God actually teaches, you are supposed to go and gather with the saints. Or even where two or three are gathered together. Go and find others. Well, me and my family, we have our own church at home. That doesn't count. That, that's, that's, it's talking about going and finding others. Going and finding others. Gathering together with others. Um, and people who don't want to go to church, that just shows your privilege for sin. Just saying. So, you can hate on me all you want. I, I couldn't care less. But I know what the Bible says on, on that. So, don't worry about the trolls. Don't worry about the haters. Uh, the ragings of the trolls will die out in the fog of indifference while we continue to plod along uh, preaching the word of God. So don't worry about it. So just something I just wanted to share. Uh, I find it really funny. Uh, there's all kinds of nonsense out there. Uh, all kinds of crazy cults and heresies and 
crazy groups and all that. So just, just ignore them. Ignore them. And the Word of God says, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. They want to be ignorant of the Word of God, let them. Don't worry about it. Keep serving the Lord. So God bless you, folks. God bless all those who love our Lord God, Jesus Christ. God bless all those who love His Holy Word. Hope to see you again. And as always, if I don't see you again, I'll see you in the sky. God bless.